Audi has declared war on America's standoffish relationship with diesels, sticking the engines in almost every model. But this one's the most stylish. Let's drive the 2014 A7 TDI and check the tech and the status at the front lines. Now the A7 is a very popular car in terms of halo for Audi. It doesn't sell a lot. It's about 9% of their sales. Not bad, but it's a premium model. But it accounts for two or three times that much of the company's sort of hype right now and its rep. Everyone knows and loves this car. But it's thought of as a sporty four-door coupe. When you put a diesel in there, at least in the American market, that tends to fight the sporty, sleek sort of mentality. And that's going to be an interesting question to see how well it pulls off those two sets of DNA. Not much different on the outside. You won't have the TDI graphics you find on our press car, so you'll have to spot one of these guys by the TDI badge on its rump. Now inside, the 7 TDI is no different substantially from any other 7, so I'm not going to do a huge deep dive into the cabin tech. To find out about that, go look at our previous reviews on the A7 and the S7 at cars.cnet.com. Only a few things tip you off if you're in a diesel. The tachometer is the main one. There's your red line at, what, 4,800 RPM? That would be, uh, what, about 2,000 lower than in the supercharged gas engine car. And on a really cold morning like our shoot day today, there's a moment or two pause when you first start the car. That reminds you it's a diesel as well. And this is interesting, an energy consumer's screen that shows you what parasitic operations are dragging down the engine's efficiency and with a rough estimation by how many gallons of fuel per hour they're burning. And in keeping with the efficient diesel theme, a couple of other things here. You've got an auto start-stop defeat. Normally this car will auto start-stop at lights or in traffic that stop and go. Luckily that defeat is sticky. Defeat it once and it stays that way. And that's how I like it. I'll show you why in a moment. Now under the hood, you know it's a diesel even if you didn't look at it. You can hear it. Turbocharged V6 3 liter. There's your turbo right there. Slightly smaller for the US than Europe, so it has better low RPM spool up at the sacrifice of, I believe, a little bit of top speed. Not that it matters, it's academic. Your numbers on this guy are 240 horsepower, kind of small for a 4,300 pound car, but 428 foot pounds of torque. That's a stunning delta between horsepower and torque. Zero to 60 is five and a half seconds. What really matters is the MPG. 24 city, 38 highway, 29 average. One drivetrain, eight speed automatic, Tiptronic, and of course, Quattro all wheel drive. Let's go see how it works. Okay, on the road, the first thing I notice in this A7 TDI is I'm hearing more diesel noise than I do in some other diesels that we've driven lately that don't even cost this much. Um, I'm kind of surprised by that. At idle and in city conditions, I hear it come through rather notably. That's uh, not what I expected here. Once you're out on the road, there's such great torque from this car. It feels like you could get into any sort of situation you need to hit. It's always got the beef. The thing is, though, it needs to get spooled up a little. I know Audi tuned the turbo in this American version to spool up faster, but it still gets buried under a little turbo lag, and it's two overdrive gears. Unless you've got it in one of the dynamic modes, or you're self-shifting, or it's in sport mode, you got all these different modes to wake it up, it's kind of a laggard until it gets spooled up. Compared to the supercharged V6 gas version of the same car, 0 to 60 is just two tenths slower in the diesel, while average MPG is 28% better. The steering on this car was very odd for me. It's an electromechanical steering rack, but when the lane departure tech is turned on, which is active by the way, it'll prevent you from drifting out of a lane by using the steering rack, uh, it gets in the way a whole bunch of times. I was driving once down the road, straight line, and it corrected me. I wasn't doing anything that needed correcting. Uh, sometimes it will let you go all the way onto the line and then it corrects. Other times it's very conservative, pulls you back when you're nowhere near the line. And other times this little icon on the dash indicates it just can't find the lines when it goes yellow. So this system seems to be somewhere between a work in progress and a mess. I wasn't impressed by it. I'm going to assume it's this car because Audi doesn't normally get those things wrong. But I'll tell you, Infinity and Acura tend to get them more right.
Okay, let's price this guy. About $68,000 delivered for an A7 TDI. They have two trim levels. That's the basic one. On top of that, you can add a driver assistance package for $2,800. That's the lane departure stuff we talked about and also adaptive cruise and some stop and go in city traffic. 850 more gets you Bose audio all in about 71.5 done up CNET style. Okay, if you drive one of these, here's how you should check the tech. Note the power delivery and if it's sensitive enough for you in everyday driving. At the same time, listen in for the diesel noise. I found it kind of intrusive, you may not. Lane departure warning. Seems a little nibbly and weird to me and very conservative. Let's you kind of get to the dotted line before it does anything. Finally, check the math. This car costs about $2,400, all things being equal, just for the diesel option. My back of the envelope penciling out tells me it's about a 6.2 year earn back at current prices. It doesn't really make sense, to be honest. I doubt you'll have this car that long. So you've got to also factor in the fact that you love diesel torque and the fact that it's got 19% lower CO2 emissions.